Awesome. Great. <laughs> okay, so how are you doing, Johannes? Well, uh, pretty awesome, I guess. It's like uh, you did some amazing work there. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really glad to really. hear that. So do you feel yeah, like it's uh, is sticking? Because I know with all the five minute, 15 minute sessions, it seems like there's progress and then kind of reverting back. But the soul journey, you feel like um, it's been your, your energy or your vibes, like it's been like progressively getting better. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, That's good. Yeah, pretty much that. Yeah, I guess you will experience that because I was really like enabled to really work on deep stuff in this last week so that is so awesome to finally be able to do that <laughs> i'm glad to hear that i've been thinking a lot about that session because um it's not very often that i have to you know kind of like trap a soul and so that that sort of uh that twin aspect of yourself was really wreaking havoc on what your balance is in this life i've been thinking so much about this because it's such a kind of a unique situation um, but that, that without that kind of, um, hindering your balance as you, um, that should definitely help. And how are we supposed to understand what that's about? I, I, I try to do as little trying to understand something that's, that's beyond my own mind, but I just do as what spirit guides me to do. And that was the one thing I could do to help you actually experience life for you, Johannes, without any kind of energetic riffraff coming from some other weird dimension, you know? <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much for that. Yeah, I totally feel yeah. it. Like I'm still in this kind of state, like I'm used to it, you know, like this was yeah. my kind of whole life going like this. So I'm still used to doing this, but it's, I noticed that I don't, yeah, that I can, can do it differently now. I'm I feeling see. the change totally. It's just get to get used to it on my yeah. conscious level. And actually like my ego is pushing too very much. So it's, Still got to work on that too. <laughs> I see. You know, one day at a time. I mean, I got stuff I got to work on and it doesn't just happen overnight. And sometimes we need life in order to um, teach us how to really grab hold of the version of ourself that we're aspiring to become, you know? We need more life mm -hmm. experiences. And then as we continue to kind of step into or transition into being more that version, um, it gets easier and easier. And mm -hmm. I know, I know you're on your way. I know you're on your way. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, pretty sure about that. Yes, yeah. it's going awesome. Like really, yes, as I like gone through, through really deep stuff this whole week. And yeah, it's wow. awesome to finally be able to, to do that, like childhood trauma and stuff like that. So yeah, so awesome. So in this uh, Chakra Body Transformation session, what, um, you know, what is it that you're wanting to focus on or just do the chakra work and see what comes through? Well, I would love to finally be able to experience my gifts more because like I did okay. work with them. Okay. I did sessions in this mm -hmm. week. I experienced, like, like you said, like I just have to be um, okay with what I got mm -hmm. and it totally worked. It mm -hmm. helped immensely to other people. So that is already awesome, but I would really like to be able to experience more of my gifts. You know? Okay. I know they work, but just for me to be able to be better understand and use them kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. I like where, awesome. I like where this is going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you want to get started now on the session and uh, or do you want to ask any questions before we get started or anything? No, it's, no we would like to start with the session. It's, okay. Yeah, okay. It's awesome. Kind of fine. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and relax here. Okay. So we're going to really focus on bringing out more sensitivity to your own psychic gifts, your own spiritual gifts whatever that may be because sometimes we don't even know what it is yet you know we think we know but we don't always know and um, so anything that is sort of unbelievable or something you could aspire to um that we could kind of tap into that as well and uh bringing alignment to your chakra bodies so okay All right, let's see where spirit takes us here. This is a very interesting beginning. There is a line, a, a thick black line, and then there's two gray walls on either side. 
I don't know if this is supposed to be a ridiculously narrow hallway or if I'm just too far away where I need to go closer and then it will just get bigger and bigger as I get closer. I also feel there's sort of like, um, kind of like uh, if you're if you're you're in a room and the air feels like the airflow feels great but then you sit down in a specific spot and there's all this like vent air coming in on your face you notice it um there's something about like an energy kind of like energy coming down from above and it's just sort of like kind of swirling about and kind of influencing the gray colors to have some i don't know softer gray white lighter gray colors and they're just kind of like swirling in. So let me just see where this takes us here. <sighs> okay. <sighs> so the next thing, I'm trying to move forward to investigate more, but that's just not an option. So I'm getting smaller, actually. And I'm kind of like, uh, I feel like I'm kind of enclosed in a small space that's only getting smaller and smaller. But this is really oddly um, kind of associated with the third eye here, like a wall up. Um, there's just a wall up. Even though it's a wall, it's also sort of like a cube box that's just getting smaller. And then you're inside of it. <sighs> Your energy field actually, um, it radiates an element of patience, which is really awesome for me to feel that. Um, I actually experience radiating um, energetic patience, um, which is an amazing tool to work with. So even though I'm seeing this event taking place and it's getting smaller, um, you're actually just going to be patient with it. And that's, ma that's magical. That's a magical message right there. Um, because you become more powerful than anything that's trying to like, you should be nervous if the box is getting smaller. And you're like, ah, I'm just going to be patient. I'm not worried. Now the box getting smaller just starts to disappear and things just open up naturally because you're not intimidated. You're not threatened. You're not working with fear anymore and trying to find, 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 find. You're just letting it go and you're allowing things to just fall into place. And that's perfect. That's actually, that is a, that's a major achievement here <laughs> from all these sessions. It's a super major achievement. Okay. I'm going to keep watching this because what's interesting here, Johannes is um, there's this desire to move forward, but there seems to be all these energy kind of barriers or blocks. Um, and I mean, it's, it's kind of on the extreme side, but I should be nervous. I should be worried. I should say, wow, there's just so much here. We got to break down. But because of your patient energy, I don't have to worry about that because it's actually going to fall naturally. And I don't have to do all the hard work because I can just work with the patient energy you're already working with and then use that in these energy blocks and just dis dissolve them. So I, it's like, believe it or not, it may seem like, oh my gosh, there's like a mountain in the way, but it's like, there's not, this is totally an illusion because your patience is more powerful than the mountain itself. So that's a pretty cool thing. Like this is from the beginning of your session. We are discovering this. That's awesome, Johannes. Okay. So let's see. What am I supposed to do next here? <laughs> let's see. Okay, I'm doing something a little unexpected because I see this little version of you. It's like in an ever like getting smaller cube and um, I'm still standing in a room and let me just kind of watch what I'm doing here. I've, this is something I'm not used to. It's almost like I'm creating a dynamic mirror, like a, like a disco ball, but I'm on the inside of it and there's all these reflective parts. And I'm on the inside looking at every single reflective part. And I'm not worried about this ever small, getting smaller you because there's some sort of other way around this. And every single one of these sort of uh, aspects of the disco ball has an eye in it. So there's like lots, like infinite eyes. And, and I'm inside the disco ball itself. It's kind of like, is this the infinite eye? Is this like the all-seeing eye, the psychic eye? Um, is that what this is alluding to? I'm not sure yet. And I'm glowing brighter on the inside. And instead of saying, I, Abby, I'm glowing brighter on the inside, I'm saying Johannes is growing, glowing brighter on the inside of his own inner eye. And I'm going to step to the outside, and from the outside, I'm going to see this event. 
and I see you now standing on the inside of this extraordinary disco ball with all of these infinite eyes and you're glowing brighter on the inside and all this light is shining in infinite directions. And we start to see what was once Johannes in this ever enclosing sort of self imprisonment is just, it, it's over. Like it's just breaking off. It was some weird story we got tangled up in, but now the story's changing. And so it's just dissolving on its own because we're stepping into a totally new timeline of experiences. And we can do that. We can literally do that at any time. So this is a really big deal. I still feel like remnants of that uh, kind of lingering here. But again, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of power. It's just sort of like, um, it's sort of like, I don't know, like you could say there was a massive oil spill, but the water, um, it just slowly disperses it or cleanses it out. And I'm not seeing the darkness along the water, the shoreline anymore. It's just starting to turn into like natural water along the shoreline. It looks clean. It looks like it's balancing itself out just naturally. <sighs> um, I'm being told that I have like manifested a backup of, of blocks like inside of my room kind yeah. of thing. Maybe it's that there's still some lingering around. That's that's interesting because I will definitely say you have a very complex blocks. Um, so you could imagine it's one of those great Christmas presents where you open it up and there's a box inside of a box inside of a box inside of a box. Like, how many more boxes? How many more boxes? But not just that. It's like, here's a, a cube box. But then over here is another dimensional cube box. And you have to go in between. Like, it's just a very extraordinary energetic maze. Um, so how do you exactly get through an energetic maze? Sometimes you just don't go through the maze because the maze doesn't really matter. It's just some idea we mm -hmm. had to make it more complicated than it really is, you know? <laughs> and so we could just go, yes. done, <laughs> and see ya. Okay. And we start fresh. We start with something new, you know? Um, but mm -hmm. let, let me just keep going along here. Yes. And let's sure. see. Um, one thing that my spirit guides want to say is um, it, this is a really positive thing for you to take notice of. And that is what at the beginning of this, we're sort of, they're wanting you to see all of this extraordinary um, sort of blocked information and how it appears to be um, concerning or there's a lot in the way, but really they're wanting you to see how, um, like I was saying, we don't have to work on the maze anymore because we can just let it fall away. Like they're really wanting me to highlight that. Um, so anything that you've created or psychics have seen in the past, we're actually going to, it's just, it's old stuff. So um, that had a reality at one time. It doesn't have a reality anymore. So that's, that's the world that we're living in now. That's your energy field now. So um, that's what they're wanting you to um, experience your identity as moving forward. No blocks, no complicated blocks, because it doesn't have to be that way anymore because it isn't that way anymore. So again, it comes back to how, how are we processing you know, our own belief system? Um, and we can change our belief systems with, with basic affirmations. I just say, I'm not blocked. And now, bam, the, this maze just doesn't have any hold, any power. And it just eventually falls away with patience and time and persistence. And I am not blocked um, types of affirmation. Um, but let's, let's see what's, what happens next year. Okay. All right, so this uh, disco ball is, it's not just about the third eye, believe it or not, there's a throat element involved here. And it's kind of amazing how I see like the third eye and the throat um, have weird relationship with each other. So when there's third eye blocks, I can also see throat blocks. Um, and it's almost like predictable. <laughs> like, okay, this is a surprise, <laughs> it's a throat involved here. It seems like it's very, very oftentimes throat is involved with it. But uh, let's see. Let's see what this is. Okay. Okay, let me just let this energy kind of fluff off. It's just kind of... Some emotion about it. Just releasing emotion right now. So it's in the emotional gut too. There's just a lot of reaction right now to whatever this is. So I'm just letting it come out here. And they're just going to relax all the energy bodies on down and tell them they're doing a really great job. You're doing a really great
Great job. Thank you for being supportive of each other. Thank you, Throat, for expressing yourself. Thank you for Emotional Gut for helping Throat. Thank you, Third Eye, for working with all these energy bodies. Thank you for working together. All the while, we're going to say thank you to the heart. Thank you, heart, for being exactly as you are. You're absolutely beautiful. Thank you for being so supportive of all the other energy bodies. All right, we're going to go sexual body. Sexual body, thank you so much. You are such a precious part of the chakra body system, and we're so grateful for all that you do. Thank you so much for all of your support and activity in this process. Wow. This is creating some amazing energetic shifts. And we'll just uh, we'll just get crown and root involved here. So crown, you're amazing. Thank you for the amazing ideas and and all the encouragements and suggestions that you spin out on a day to day basis. Where would we be without you? Thank you so much, Crown, for all that you do. Root, I want to give you a very special thank you as well. Thank you so much for doing all that you can to keep Johannes grounded. To keep groundedness with all the energy bodies and help everybody work together. Thank you so much for all that you do. This is already starting to expand uh, in a beautiful way. It's very surprising how, how quick and easy that was. And as I'm watching this disco ball here, it's not just the third eye anymore. It's all your energy bodies working together. So if you were to take every one of your chakra bodies and put each one, it's like a box inside a box inside a box. So it's like a sphere inside a sphere inside a sphere. And they're all interconnected and they're all working together as one extraordinary gift for you. So not just the third eye, but it's the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, emotional gut, sexual body, it's the root. So all of these energy bodies working together in unison, helping each other, supporting each other, communicating with each other to help you. Okay. As this is happening, there's some, um, some re responses in other places. And it's, it's odd because it's not necessarily saying it's in your chakra bodies, but I see a very strange kind of a bloated man and he's busting out of the seams of his own skin even. So he's like quite, um, he has so much inside of himself and it's like, a, it's like too many guts, too much uh, fat, too many, like all of this materials. And he's sort of like, you could imagine somebody who is stuffing a lot of, um, like putting stuffing into a really big coat and they're kind of like the stuffing just keeps going and going and going until there's nowhere else to put it. So it starts to break the seams of the coat, even the stuffing does. But uh, I see him and it's his skin is like breaking at the seams. Um, it looks awful. It really does. He's got gray skin. It's like black. Um, his skin is like um, ripping and it's just coming out. So I'm watching him right now. And I ask him, um, I'm telling him a bunch of things. Um, I ask him, how do you feel about yourself? And why, um, why are you um, allowing this skin ripping event to take place? Why are you allowing this? And what, why has it happened like this? How did you get yourself into this position? Do you, are, do you need help um, overcoming this? I'm like s saying lots and lots of things to him. Now, let's see what his response is. He can't speak. He can't tell me. And he can see just fine out of his human eyes, but his uh, third eye has got a black shield over it. And he's uh, kind of bitter behind the scenes. And he's also kind of playing a mind game, too, because... Um, he's kind of like, uh, 
I'm weak or in need of help, but he's actually blocking himself off in the process. So he's not being honest with me or with himself. And uh, so I'm telling him what he's uh, helping me to see about himself. And this creates the bitterness inside. But the thing is, is he's, uh, he's, this version is, this is impatience. This is demand. This is uh, frustration. This is uh, expectations that are not being met on a, in a timely manner. This is, uh, those types of energies are all just brewing up inside of him and splitting him apart at the seams of his skin. So that's so, so a lot of what's inside here. So I'm just going to relax him on down and I'm going to bring that beautiful energy of patience in that I experienced in the first place. And I'm going to show him how amazing that has been for me to feel. <sighs> yeah, he's super angry. And when I share that beautiful patience, um, his eyes start to burn with fire and he's just very, he's just getting more and more and more angry inside, but he refuses to speak. I mean, so he just keeps bottling up more and more and more and it's just busting out more at the seams. So, but I will say there's quite an energy um, developing in the back of the head here. And uh, so I just continue to work with him. I tell him, thank you um, for everything you're sharing. Um, I don't want you to hurt yourself, though, in the process. And I know how sometimes life gets us wound up and wrapped up, and we get kind of in the zone of that experience, and we don't know how to just simply stop getting wet, wrapped up and wound up just to stop and say, you know, I don't need it anymore, and to completely shift gears. Sometimes we just keep holding on to something that it's, we just always have experienced it this way and we didn't realize how wound up with it we were. And you're starting to realize that it, you've got to let go. He just, he's still refusing to speak. And he's sort of speaking from his physical body, just from inside of himself, and not speaking from his voice. I'm going to give him a voice. So I'm actually creating a voice box and, and I'm just putting it in there. And I, I'm telling him, um, there's a couple of vo voice messages you can use. Just like push one and see if that feels right to you. Um, you can, one of them says, thank you. One of them says, I can't stand you. One of them says, leave me alone. Like, let's just feel them out and see what works best for you. Um, <laughs> because when I find out what works best for him, then we can start working on that. <laughs> okay, let's see. He really doesn't want to say anything. He doesn't even want to try to. He doesn't want to give me any hints about it. And he's sort of creating a doorway um, that he's wanting me to go through in order to understand something more. And so I'm going to accept that because this is quite a severe case of I refuse to speak. So I'm just going to go a little bit deeper into this here. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. On the other side of him is. <sighs> Let's say you could take a single minute and expand it into a billion years. Let's say you could take a single black straight line and expand it into. Um, a bajillion planets um, let's say so I go into here and I see what are lots of lines intersecting lines and they're very much so reflective of this idea this concept so each one of these lines is sort of an opportunity to expand um, or contract the experience into a second or into a billion years and there's like a lot of this over here and this would again be a reflection of you're making this harder than it really is, but there's also something very important about this that we need to understand in order to do the chakra body transformation work I'm called to do. So there's something also about this that is, is worth uh, um, uncovering some more clues to this mystery. So I'm bringing him into this place and I just want to see what he does. 
he he's grotesque he's 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 ugly he's rotten he's uh um i mean there's this like he when he comes in anybody would he smells foul he's got rotting flesh he's bloated he's many things um and when he comes in he sort of comes in um you know pushing all like these intersecting lines create what are like buttons so he's sort of pushing them like some sort of extraordinary i don't know like star trek spacecraft or something so he's just pushing all these buttons and uh and i'm taking on the role of somebody that's saying um do you see yourself in the mirror have you looked at yourself today did you take a bath in the last like 10 years? Did you, you know, I'm taking on this like role of judgment and, and I'm sending him all this energy. <laughs> Let's see what he says. <laughs> Let's see what he says. He scowls, he, he's angry, um, but this is uh, starting to reflect a spaceship. And uh, apparently we're gonna go somewhere. <sighs> hmm. Okay, this is very complicated. There's a lot of information coming in, but I have absolutely no idea on the human level how to translate that into words. So I just gotta just continue to let myself absorb it and I'll just start to understand it as this uh, session continues. If I were to describe it in words, it's orange in color. Um, it's like marble-esque looking. It comes in a sort of a cylindrical tube of information and light. And uh, that's the best I could tell you <clears throat> about what it's saying is what it looks like. <clears throat> so. And uh, after I receive all of this information, I just step into his shoes. You know, I become his body, his, his mind. I just step into him. And I become a part of him. He just won't let go. He won't just simply stop. He won't acknowledge. It's sort of like, have you ever met somebody that they just simply won't, um, you could tell them a thousand times, um, you know, about themselves, but they'll deflect it a thousand times and they'll say well it was somebody else's fault well they didn't do this and it's never their fault you know so he keeps deflecting everything and he needs to just own up to something he needs to own up to something and he's just refusing to do that um and so i'm just going to continue to work on him here so I stop the, the experience of movement. I stop him from touching the buttons. I stop time itself. And I take this entire space with everything in it and I turn it into a small marble and I put it into my pocket. And then I say, all right, Johannes's energy field. We're doing chakra body transformation work. We're opening up psychic senses, psychic ability, even psychic ability. We don't even know what that, what it is all about. And all I know is I have this marble of information. So what do I need to do next to reconcile all of this? Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm on a pathway way, 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 way above. Very disorienting and exhausting up here. And uh, it's interesting, the shape of it. It's like a strange bridge. And it's got um, rounded, it's made out of what could be like brick, um, but it's gray colored stone. Um, and it has uh, like rounded doorways beneath it that hold it together. So it's a bridge with that sort of rounded doorways and these pillars, um, but it's all kind of straight. I've seen a bridge like this before made out of, um, like stone but it's huge it's massive it goes forever and it's an infinite space so when i looked down i could say hello 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 and my voice will echo echo for all eternity downward upward in every direction and i'm just walking on this it's very disorienting just gonna keep walking uh, there becomes a massive crack in the bridge and it starts to become vulnerable as though it's going to fall. One goes to falls to the right, one falls to the left. And then where will I stand if the bridge is falling? 
but it never necessarily does fall. It just creates a massive crack within itself and it cracks all the way through. And so the support system of the bridge is falling apart. It's weakening. It's not as strong or reliable as it once was. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe this bridge isn't really leading us to anywhere that is actually where you want to be. Maybe it's some idea again, and it's taking you in other directions um, instead of really the one direction that you want to be in. It's just uh, creating more distractions. As I say that, the bridge starts to solidify and the crack disappears. And I sit down on top of the bridge. And the bridge is a female energy. And I start to see a world open up around it. And on either side, there's a prairie, there's butterflies, there's uh, green grasses, it's pretty. Um, there's water that flows through here. <sighs> Who is she? What is she all about? Hmm. She's very shy. She doesn't want to show herself as anything but the bridge. And if I never noticed that it was a she, then she would be perfectly fine with that as well. Again, communication. Again, the throat. And I'm speaking up. You know, come out of the bridge work. Like, come out of the woodwork. Show yourself, you know. Um, speak. Say something. She is extremely shy. She's, she could be able to talk. The other guy, he was uh, belligerently not going to say anything because he's kind of got a sour attitude, you know? But she actually is just ridiculously shy. So she would like to speak, but she's just so shy. I feel like I would be able to get her to say something um, sooner than I'd be able to get him to say something. But let's just see. <laughs> hmm. I am, I'm transforming the bridge into a female body, a female face. She really doesn't like me doing that. She keeps resisting it and distorting my image into the bridge again, but I say no. And um, you're just going to be a distorted looking woman, I guess. But I need to, you need to just be who you are and stop trying to blend into the scenery. You need to be who you are and you need to stand um, your own ground and be who you are. You have to be who you are. The world needs you to be who you are. You're not a bridge. You're a person, not a bridge. So when she, she stands before me as kind of like a mirage in the air, which distorts her body shape. So she's got like oversized uh, like chest and shoulders, and it's very exp expanded out. Her arms are really distorted. Like her face, so, I mean, she's got blonde hair. She's, uh, it's like her face is the one thing I can almost keep in place, but everything else is like, she, she won't show me her body shape because she, she just keeps distorting it. So she's just going to look like this then. I, I don't know why I got some wild idea to put her into a mannequin. And so she would be forced to have a very specific form and, and she needs to just be a form and stop doing that. Let's just see. But I'm going to put her into the form of what we could describe as Eve. So we'll put her into the form of, of like, a, like the first woman of all time, like, like a beautiful, um, vibrant gift to the whole universe. And I'm going to have her be that form because it's just going to honor her reflection, honor her meaning, her value, and give her confidence. It's going to help her to love herself as well. So she's uh, also, she, she can do this, but she has a lot of hurt within herself that's rejecting it as well. So it's almost like this male part's disgustingness is kind of inside of her and uh, making it hard for her to want to be so pure, so absolutely pure um, of essence and, and, and meaning and value and all that. He kind of is like... Um, like if you were to take horse manure and then inject it into your very veins, he is like that type of feeling. He's like just disgusting. He's shitty. He's gross. He's nasty. 
then he makes her feel desecrated. He makes her feel impure. So we're starting to understand that this, this, this whole thing for you, Johannes, we're, we're, we're uncovering the clues here and we're starting to understand there's a male and female side. There's a hardcore block with communication and the, the ability to really see the sacredness and be the sacredness of yourself and to just be that. You can be that. We're just going to keep working through this. Okay. Okay. There's some sadness here. And it's not, it's, it's honest, it's really honest sadness. Um, it's bewildered. It feels like it, I'll never, I'll never um, conquer this. I, I, I'll never get, I, I won't ever conquer this. And um, it feels like a terrible loss, a very long life of um, terrible loss uh, of identity in sort of like a whirlpool of, of some emotional experience that you can't overcome. It would be like somebody living with depression for 80 straight years and having to live with it, never being able to overcome um, their addiction to feeling grief and sadness, no matter how desperately they want to feel happy. So that's kind of what she's emanating. She'll never, she'll never overcome this. So she's imprisoned within herself, within these feelings, within this. This is a big deal. It's a very big deal. It's very exhausting. It makes me feel sick to my stomach as well. Um, but I tell her I'm proud of you because you you said something. You actually expressed yourself. And I knew you could do it. And when I acknowledge that she expressed herself, the, the male a gross guy inside starts to kind of like um, twist her face up and sort of punish her for speaking. How dare you, you know? So he's sort of uh, controlling her. And that, that then um, encourages her to go back to a place of suffering within herself and degrading herself not allowing her to be the pure Eve, um, the mother God, the mother Mary, or, you know, the beautiful divine feminine energy. So just a moment here. So I choose to see him and her. Um, I take him out of her and then I have them standing side by side. And when I take him out of her, I start to see her start, she starts to glow. Uh, she starts to glow golden energy. I mean, it's very golden in color. And it's not like light that goes in every direction, but her whole body just starts to become a golden light, a golden color that glows, soft glow all around her. He looks gross as ever. He looks as gross as ever. 10,000 times grosser than we've seen him yet. But the thing is, is that we can't dislike him. We actually should feel sorry for him because he cannot figure out how to let go so he can heal himself. So he too suffers. He too suffers. And, and because he is so grotesque, the, he experiences that as himself inside too. So what he is on the outside, he feels that is his identity on the inside, and that's, that's not who he truly is. That's him desecrating himself and not allowing him to be the Adam or uh, the, the divine masculine energy, the beautiful divine masculine energy that he is. He, he's rejecting it. I don't know why I just, every time I think about him, I just keep thinking of um, injecting horse manure into my veins. I keep seeing this image over and over again. So I, um, I create a waterfall, um, literally water, pure water. And I allow it to start to sort of like he's, you know how they put the those uh, needles in when you're in the hospital and they kind of put the saline. So I'm like, have him, um, he's kind of getting the saline treatment right now, but it's like angelic holy water. <laughs> so I just want to see what he does here with this. And I say over and over again, in every single particle of the water and every cell of his body and every aspect of himself, I say, you are beautiful. You are kind. 
You are a loving person. You are angelic. You do extraordinary things to help other souls. Um, you are alive. You, th you are thriving. You are healthy. You are divine masculine. You are kind to divine feminine. You honor divine feminine. You honor yourself. And I say these things um, to charge the water and to charge his energy field and charge him so we can kind of counteract what he's holding on to. But you see, now that I've gotten her to speak, now I can finally get him to start to speak too. Because this has got to bust eventually. We just keep working on it. Okay, so, okay, so there's something I'm being told here that I, I don't know what, they're telling me there's something I'm supposed to do, but I'm not sure what it is yet. I'm just going to keep watching. It's almost like, it kind of sounds to me like um, I'm supposed to take his essence out of the body and let the body just go, um, like it just needs to go back to the earth or back to the infinite it just needs to be recycled um, energy, like a tree that dies in the woods, just becomes recycled energy. Um, so to take his spirit essence out. So I'm just going to work with this uh, notion. I'm just going to take his spirit essence out and let everything else just go to rot. And the water just washes it away. But as I take him out and to separate him from that, there's an awful slimy goop that kind of uh, keeps him connected to it. And I see Divine Feminine, actually, who's been glowing with this golden light, um, starts to come around. And she, she sort of sends her energy into him to give him the strength to totally let go. So Divine Feminine now heals the Divine Masculine. This is quite hard. And this is actually healing the emotional gut, healing the third eye, the mental body region, healing the throat. It's just, just a bit disorienting right now. It's healing the heart, it's healing the sexual body, it's healing the root. Healing the crown, just releasing. I'm just going to continue to let this circulate for a bit. It's still in the process here that we're closer now than ever before. Hmm. She uh, starts to transform into a blanket, a warm blanket, and she wraps around him almost like a newborn bo baby boy. And then there's a warm blanket, just, just a warm blanket, so soft and so um, very comfortable. And it starts to wrap around him like he's a newborn baby boy. She, she wraps around him. He still remembers, though. He still has a memory of, of the old part of himself. And there's a lot of angels that come and they keep encouraging him to accept the memory, but don't you don't have to be it. You don't have to be the memory. You can accept the memory, but you don't have to be the memory. And the boy is conflicted in his own mind, whether he is angelic or corrupt chaotic and the more the angels uh continue to encourage him um to be the love that has always been there to be the love that is within himself he starts to realize that love is is true but chaos is always going to withhold him is going to encourage more illusions that are going to box him inside of a box inside of a box inside of a box so he can experience life in this way but is that the way he wants to experience life is the question or does he want life to become a soft warm blanket wrapped in the arms of the divine feminine encouraging him to love himself encouraging him to remember the love that shines within himself This is a, this is important here. There's an important event happening. 
and the baby makes a choice, although I don't feel that this is the final choice. Um, but from his own mind, he sinks into the dark side of himself and he transforms all the angels into, he just sort of desecrates them all into um, skeletal beings. Um, and they start to chant something quite disturbing, far more disturbing. But he becomes stronger and stronger and stronger in this uh, dark chant of energy. He becomes very strong in it. But this is interesting because the blanket of divine feminine never stops holding him and he cannot desecrate it. It never transforms. It always remains a soft, glowing, warm blanket of love. Always does. It never changes. And he becomes so angry about this, he uh, sends lots of his disturbing energy into the blanket and it never changes. Because the divine feminine within you is now becoming so strong within her herself that she's not wavering and she doesn't have to waver. What he needs to do is waver and she's not going to waver. He has to waver. It's sort of like the ultimate stare down, but she it has the power because she knows the strength within herself. She knows who she is. And she chooses to be that. He's still struggling with himself. He's still struggling with his own identity. And it's interesting because her warm blanket, uh, after a time, he can't fight it anymore. And he becomes uh, extremely weak and uh, even starts to, I don't know, turn into a weird slimy goop and uh, kind of like um, drain out the bottom of this blanket. And all of that um, dark, disturbing, angelic chanting um, just fades away. And I see the blanket is all that is left. <sighs> but she says that isn't the case. He's just hiding right now. He's just like really, 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 really tiny. He's so small. He's like tinier than a little tiny piece of pepper, little black pepper. <laughs> he did that. <laughs> It's just very small and he's kind of ashamed of himself and um, she's okay being a golden blanket but she's okay being any form now I mean she could be a golden elephant a golden bird a golden planet a golden star a golden woman a golden anything could she be a golden man I don't know but she wants me to focus on this tiny little tiny little speck of the divine masculine and she smiles at me and she wants to be a, a golden woman who's an angelic bird. She, she looks like an angel, but she has bird wings. And she bends down and she puts a tiny little speck onto the palm of her hand. And she sort of blows on it very gently, love. It's sort of like blowing on a flame to get the fire to go. So she's uh, encouraging it to develop, um, this uh, little speck to develop, to come to life. And she just continues to do it. And it's so soothing and it's so comforting and it's so forgiving kind of thing. Like it, it encourages him to know that it, it's okay. Everything that's ever happened, um, it's just part of what you've been through. It's part of um, the best that you knew how at the time. And she's just very encouraging, very, very encouraging. <sighs> And he starts to become uh, soft. Even as a tiny little speck, I can see him um, completely relax his willpower. And she takes him and he turns into a tiny little orb, golden orb. And she puts a tiny little golden orb into her heart. And she encourages that little tiny orb, which is like a seed of the divine masculine. She um, encourages it to grow within the, the love, within herself. <sighs> and time is passing here like I see the wheel of time passing and I start to see that this little tiny seed is starting to grow into a baby boy and into a toddler and into a young younger boy of a teenager and on and on and on it's starting to grow grow up so to speak and they're growing together as one golden light and she is still smiling at him she is still bright and he finds comfort in her energy and encouragement and strength. And he's still in the process of being, um, he's been reborn, but he's still in the process of uh, totally uh, coming back to life again, coming to the level that she's achieved. He's still working on it within her energy. 
But I see time pass and they show me again that this does happen. But right now it's, it needs, uh, needs watering and sunlight and those types of things within the love of the divine feminine. It just needs time. So it's happening. I'm just going to wait here for a minute. She shows me that um, she's standing in darkness and there's a light switch. And when I, she turns the light switch on, I hear like it's a big place and um, it, it sort of uh, starts to turn the lights on at the front. And I go and I hear the lights go on. It's like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> like these rows of lights come on one at a time at a time at a time at a time. Um, just from this one little flick of the light switch. And this place completely opens up and the walls and the ceiling all fall to the sides. And I see that uh, the dimension, she's sort of going upward, but it's like all of it's ra revolving around her, her intentions, her desires, her dreams. It's all revolving around her. And I see the color shifting and shifting and shifting. And she just keeps going up. And I feel uh, the power of water here as well. Something about the power of water and the color blue. And she just continues to go up and I start to see her more than just golden light. I see her wearing blue now. She's wearing a blue dress. <sighs> and I see that uh, there starts to appear a mountain that is in the shape of like a pyramid. And uh, so she is standing um, at the top of the mountain. It's sort of like the all-seeing eye above the pyramid. So she's sort of taking on that position above a mountain. And everything is super pristine and beautiful here. She has blue and white dress, and her hair is a really beautiful dark brown color. It has some curl to it. She looks totally like a human woman. No wings or anything. She looks very natural. Hmm. Yeah, she's super bright. <sighs> Don't know why, but um, I just want to hang in here for a little bit longer. But I, I know that a lot of this has already transformed, has already kind of come full circle. But I kind of go back to the beginning or closer to the beginning where um, I had that marble with that man, that grotesque man and all that weird spaceship and all those lines and everything. And uh, I just want to make sure this is reconciled. So I just hand that to her and see what she says. It just, it, she just goes into her palm, instantly just dissolves into a powder, and just blows away in the wind. And I say, but what was the purpose of a place where um, we were storing this information, just a minute becomes a billion years, etc. What was the purpose of just storing that information? And what, you know, is that necessary? Is that needed? Is there importance to that? She says that um, you could, uh, you, you could see it like, um, you know, the like Akashic records, for instance, of a soul. And so all souls have a kind of like a place like this, where they could open up any lifetime um, of any soul really in the universe or their own soul or anything. And then they could go into um, a single second or they could go into a billion years and experience it as though it is a single second. They could do anything. Um, and for some reason, your soul was holding on to very specific parts of your information and holding on to it instead of just letting it just be a part of everything. It's sort of like, um, um, let's say you find pirate gold, you and your best friend find pirate gold and you kind of, you, you, you end up, um, doing some sort of scheme and you end up taking all of the pirate gold, except for like one treasure chest for yourself. Um, instead of just leaving it, you know, instead of sharing it. You know? <laughs> so there's something about you were like getting possessive of some parts of your timeline. Um, but it's, it's obviously all an illusion because we all are part of each other, no matter what your consciousness thinks that it has power over. Um, we're all part of each other. But for some reason, you created a, a place where you were trying to hold on to or contain parts of your um, journey. 
when really it just all needed to be let go of as part of the message is to just simply let go of trying to hold on to so much to try to hold on to an idea of power even just to simply let it go because we're a part of everything and she says that 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 isn't um it's like that how do i want to put it um let's just say that's reconciled now that's that's come to a place of balance now i think is the best way to put that she shows me that this mountain um, is strong, is grounded, is a reflection of how we are working with your chakras today um, to bringing them into a balanced, pure state of being and reflection with the divine feminine and divine masculine, a state of pure um, oneness with each other, um, sort of the bright, all-seeing eye above um, the pyramid kind of thing. She, she wants the chakra body transformation. She wants it to emanate in this way, to give you the balance that your chakras need today. That's what she's saying. And to be honest, um, she feels like you, Johannes. She feels like you. And she also feels like a, one of your higher selves. Um, she feels like she has many very important identities. And to even experience yourself as being her is going to heal you as well. Because it's interesting, if you were to um, take some time um, to uh, go into, you know, just a state of pretending or imagination, and uh, try to and try to envision this woman um, how bright and pure and wise um, and loving she is and then to just take your pretend body and walk into her pretend body um, and now to be the divine masculine that is healing within herself um, it would be very empowering and healing and balancing for you to do that so let's see Yeah, that, that feels feels like everything I'm I'm supposed to share. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you know, what do you think about all of that? <laughs> well, you're incredible. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for going through that. You're welcome, Johannes. So, Super beautiful. Um, you never know what you're gonna get. You just never know. <laughs> Yeah. So, how do you feel? <laughs> Pretty you awesome. Good. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to articulate it after a session because even for me, it's like I can feel a little like whoa, whoa, um, coming back <laughs> to reality again. Right. Well, actually, this time it's it's pretty. Pretty good. I feel awesome. It's just like very much energy is kind of lingering around my head. It's really hot, kind of yeah. hot sensation. <laughs> oh, awesome. That's awesome. Wow. So, so how are you doing? <laughs> you know, I'm doing great. <laughs> um, let me think here. Let me, let me just see if I've got any other thoughts. I will say that this was kind of a special, um, special direction with chakra body transformation because um, it sort of works in a metaphorical way to bring all of it into a strong and solid, sturdy purification and balance, you know? And I don't often see divine masculine, divine feminine as super important parts of the healing of the chakra bodies themselves and to be working together in sort of a really bright, all seeing eye sort of manner as well. And bringing communication out was a really big part. Um, Self-expression, you know, not, um, you know, really owning your identity in a way that is a balanced and healthy gift to yourself and to the world. And I really feel strongly that this session is going to give you more of an edge when it comes to what you're wanting to accomplish. So, yeah. Yes, I feel it. <laughs> That's, great. That's great. That is great. So do I understand the right right? Is this was kind of the experience just to get really my chakras totally aligned, like it just was different mm -hmm. from usual like chakras. It's like yeah. a mountain. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Right. 
Because usually, um, you know, sh so chakra body transformation can be a lot like it's just like a soul journey, but really focused on bringing balanced alignment instead of going like deep into literally anything in a soul journey is really focused on that alignment of the chakras. Then obviously chakras are dynamic um, bo energy bodies. So they're infinite universes of their own kind. So when we do chakra align it, we can fine tune and fine tune and fine tune that. Um, so we can feel more and more balanced and empowered, clear minded, um, grounded, all of those types of things. We can feel more and more of that. So yeah <laughs> awesome <laughs> yeah oh, and can you tell like how this is connected to my gifts actually showing up more like mm. really? let me see <laughs> let me see if there's anything i mean the thing about gifts are gifts are energetic um are energetic expressions. So it's sort of like creative writing or learning another language or art, you know, um, or intimacy with a lover, like it's creative expression. And then it doesn't take a logic, doesn't take trying to figure it out, you know, it's an instinct. Um, it's, uh, it's fluid, um, it's creative. And the way that I experience, you know, the jump start of any psychic gifts is learning how to get out of the mind and um, how to access what is beneath the surface of that, what it, what is into the soul even. Um, and then learning how to your own um, unique nuances with that energetic expression. So for me, um, I mean, right now, uh, this is as best as I know of my own psychic gifts, but these psychic gifts are growing just like a seed planted into the ground grows into a really large tree. Um, and I learn something new with every person that I work on. So um, they are, so you, for instance, are a gift to me, Johannes, as I am a gift to you. Um, and we learn from each other. So when you start to um, open up, you know, well, first off, you got to become energetically balanced. Um, otherwise, you're going to be resisting. You're going to be, um, you know, falling into certain avenues that aren't going to give you the freedom to access that. Um, it helps to be more energetically tuned in and balanced. Um, but I can't say what your gifts are going to be other than that this is definitely going to help. And I know the next session is going to help a lot because I'm going to teach you how to actually go into your own journey state. And when you go into the journey state, just like I do, you'll actually be able to learn how to psychically see and you'll be able to learn how to psychically hear and feel what the communications are that are going on. And you're going to be able to feel in tune with yourself too. And so for instance, you know, if you were to go into um, a vision, the vision might act, not actually feel like it's, you know, it's as clear as watching a movie on a screen, but the vision could feel like, um, like it's a feeling that is opening up a scene that you kind of walk into through your feelings. Um, and then through feeling it out, does it sort of reveal itself? And the more that you feel out and the more that it reveals itself, you'll start to understand that psychic sight isn't exactly um, straightforward. It can be based on the way things move through your emotions too. So I'm an advocate for teaching people how to psychically see without seeing anything at all. <laughs> so you walk into a completely black place and then step into it and use your pretend hands and to feel it out and start to discover what is actually there. Um, and it's all about you. It's all about your soul. And it's all about all the souls. It's a, it's cool. It's very cool. So amazing, yeah. yeah. It's kind of what I, kind of had, what I had to do. Like I was like in this. When I'm trying to see psychically. I, like it's a dark place. I just can, like, kind of feel, find something. You know, like one yeah. specific thing. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and one of the main things is, is um, you know, a lot of people when they start to want to open up psychic gifts, they they feel like they're just seeing darkness, right? So if, mm -hmm. if instead of just seeing it, you, you have an, a pretend body, right? An energy body. And then you actually choose to just feel your feet um, in this dark space um, to actually take your energetic fingers and touch the darkness itself. Try to decide if it's a room or if it's a universe. Um, try to decide what is actually in here based on the way that it feels. 
And I teach people that talking out loud is also a really great way to keep um, the experience going. Otherwise, it's just meditation. Now, meditation <laughs> can put us to sleep, right? But active meditation um, is communicating, hearing ourselves speaking out loud about what we're experiencing in an altered state of being um, and feeling out what is there and how it makes us feel. Um, and then you can run into literally anything. You can literally run into anything. You never know. <laughs> and then discovering well, like what that is saying to you. Um, that can be a tricky thing, but you've got to go with it. You've got to keep going with it. <laughs> Well, it's like a forest, like a jungle kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <It's not grim. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm looking forward to the next session. You're going to do awesome, Johannes. You're going to be a master at it. And then after that session, a lot of it is going to come full circle for you. And I think, I think you're going to start to step into your totally into your own style and your own gifts. and it's yeah it's gonna be great <laughs> awesome you're amazing abby it's thank such you. a pleasure to be working with you hey, thank so... you thank you Hannes. <laughs> that's so sweet it's a pleasure to be working with you as well <laughs> i can't be me without you and without literally everybody because it's people like you that teach me how to do what i do and to get better at it so yeah <laughs> awesome <laughs> hi so well, kind of curious what is going on with you in your life you seem to be extremely busy right now right well i've actually been traveling and then i've got oh. three kids so and all three kids are out of school which makes it um a little bit uh more complicated <laughs> when it comes to the ability to just move about uh, freely and <laughs> that sort of thing <laughs> traveling kids yeah <laughs> that's kind of where i'm at right now <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, yeah it's really so so awesome to really found you well i found you way back but i was just consciously thinking about doing a session with you when i noticed this mini session seemed like because yeah. i wasn't quite sure what how much value i could get out of a full session it was like pricey and i was like yeah oh, like I found the mini session. I was like, okay, I can pay it. Yeah. <laughs> well, from the beginning, it was just awesome what you experienced. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I know, like that's kind of why I put that mini session out there because people don't always know what to expect from a full fledged session. So it gives you the opportunity to just get your feet wet and to get um, the effect of. I mean, f for me, it's like, um, I, I have a hard time sticking with time. So I try to come to like a, like a full roundabout circle with five minute or 15 minute or 30 minute and on and on. Mm -hmm. So and it gives you kind of a full fledged mini roundabout and self discovery experience. So I'm glad you've been trying them out. Cause I think the a five or 15 minute session can be really awesome yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can see how longer Thanks. sessions really kind of like have a powerful punch to them as well and yes. yeah <laughs> well i really guess like it was a great start like kind of just getting like understanding what is going on and then really that's kind of a little bit clear now really dive deep into it yeah <laughs> i yeah. feel like it was the right path <laughs> yeah yeah i'm glad <laughs> Yeah. So again, thank you so much, Abby. It's, it's welcome, such a pleasure. It's a pleasure too. And I'm looking forward to the next session. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah, great. Me too. All right, Johannes. Well, I hope you have a great, I think it's evening, your time. Yes. yes. So I hope you have a great rest of your evening, good night's sleep. And I'll see thank you again you so very much. soon. <laughs> See you soon. Have a great day, Abby. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>